Good morning and welcome to worship at the Presbyterian Church of Los Gatos online. My name is Pastor Dave Watermuller and on behalf of our whole church we welcome you into worship today on the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent. Advent, which is known to most of the world as just December, but we in the church, we know this is a special time, a time where we prepare ourselves, we get our homes ready, we get our, our hearts ready for the coming of Christ at Christmas, and that's just around the corner, and this is the fourth Sunday in the season, so we're here today following along those themes of, the, of these days, which are hope, peace, joy, and love, and today is Love Sunday. We're going to be talking about that, and that'll show up in our worship today. Uh, I'm so glad to be with you wherever you are in the world, maybe on Facebook Live. Hi, um, if you're on Facebook Live this morning, give us a um, hello in the chat box. Just let us know you're here. Um, hello to those on YouTube. We're glad you're watching. Uh, wherever you are today, I hope you're doing great. Um, a couple of notes as we come into worship. First, after the service, today I will go and do a PS I Love You af uh, live afterwards, just to um, collect a few things that we might have missed that happened over the weekend. Um, and to look for that right after. Also, after the service today at 11.15, we have our coffee hour Zoom hosted by Pastor Taylor Kim, and I'll be on there. We talk about the sermon and just catch up with each other. So bring a cup of coffee and join us at 11.15. The info for that Zoom is in our weekly email. You can get on that e weekly email list by emailing carlo at pclg.org. Make sure you're on that list and checking your email each week. We really try to communicate clearly what's going on, and that's the best way to, to take a look. Um, speaking of what's going on, a couple things are not going on. Uh, this Wednesday, we do not have shelter and study. We're going to be off for a couple of weeks. Thursday, we're going to be off from Pastor's Bible Study for a couple of weeks um, around Christmas, New Year's time. But this Tuesday, we have a special event. Um, it's going to be a, um, a Christmas listening party by Zoom, hosted by Elder Colette Linner. Information is in the weekly uh, email, and you can take a look. Um, it's this coming Tuesday afternoon, and it's just a Zoom Christmas um, event. So hop on, enjoy some, some fellowship time. This is part of our community life ministry. Hope to see you there. Um, coming up this week also on Thursday, it's Christmas Eve, December 24th. The big day is here. Um, kids everywhere are getting so excited. My kids are flipping out. So we have two things going on on Christmas Eve. The first is a Christmas Eve drive through event. It's a, it's a drive through worship. Come and hear the story of Christmas. Come and be filled. Uh, come and enjoy a little time with your family. 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. So come anytime in that time in that time frame. It's in it's in the um, big parking lot of our church, just like our other drive-throughs. You drive in, and it's going to be lit up with some lights, and we're going to have uh, the story of Christmas in four parts, and we want to tell it to you. We have some gifts to give you. You know, I want to come to church on Christmas Eve. We can't come in here to the sanctuary, but we can be together um, even in that way. So I'd love to. I'll look forward to seeing you there. Um, Christmas Eve, four to six. If you're able to come through, tell a friend, tell a neighbor, maybe invite them to church and say, hey, you've got nothing else to do, come on over before supper. Then, that evening at 8 p.m., we have our online worship service. We're doing online worship for Christmas Eve this year. 8 p.m., Facebook Live and YouTube. Of course, you know that you can watch it later. Those, those videos live forever. But um, I'd love to watch it live with you and be able to comment and greet each other um, that evening. So that's uh, Christmas Eve, 8 p.m. You can put it on in the background while you have your um, stockings or whatever you're doing at home. Okay, those are a couple of things. You know, we're still receiving our pledges uh, in this time of year and finishing out our, our giving year. So thank you for your faithfulness with that. Um, the naughty list is going out, so you don't want to be on it. Um, thanks for getting your, your pledges in. Those are some of the announcements uh, in the life of the church. There's a lot going on as we prepare for Christmas, I know, at home. But thank you for spending the hour with us today. God bless you. Let's go to the candle lighters and come to worship together. We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often, we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is the sign of eternity. God with us, right now. We forget the company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise, Emmanuel. God is with us.
We light these candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence. God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, is a peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that company is coming, and we want to make room. O come, O come, Emmanuel, come, let us worship God today. Friends, today we light the candle as a sign of the coming Christ. The Lord will give you a sign. Look, the young woman with a child. She shall bear a son, name him Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. Now I will read the first part on the screen. Please respond with the words in bold type. Every valley is lifted up, every mountain made low. Now the glory of the Lord is revealed, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. With joy, let us come to the manger. Give thanks to the Lord, call on God's name. Now in silence, we confess that we need our God, and then we pray together. God of the future, you are coming in power to bring all nations under your rule. We confess that we have not expected your kingdom, forgetting your promised judgment. We accept lies as truth, exploit our neighbors, abuse the earth, and refuse your justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us the wisdom to welcome your way and to seek things that will endure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. In Christ, we are forgiven and beloved. Now and forever, Emmanuel, God with us. Praise the Lord. It's Christmas time. Time to put up the Christmas tree. Then we need to decorate it, of course. Got our lights, ornaments. And it's the perfect time of year to bake some Christmas cookies. Got our cookie cutters. And then we got to take the family annual Christmas card and all the stamps to send them. And then there's the shopping and the presents and the boxes and the bags. And usually we travel to see family or to enjoy some warm weather. So don't forget the suitcase. The list goes on and on. Wait, what happened? We can't even see baby Jesus anymore. We were so busy getting ready to celebrate, we can no longer even see Jesus. He is covered up by all of the details. He is completely missed. Are we missing Jesus? 
Are you missing Jesus? What does Christmas mean to you? I had parents ask this question of some of our PCLG kids. Let's listen to what they had to say. Christmas means to me a Christmas tree, putting up all the ornaments, giving people presents, and receiving presents back. Spending time with family and friends. About Jesus' birth. That I get to see my first, other friends of my family, I get to get gifts, and I get to have fun. Family, Jesus, getting together and spending time with your family. Um, Christmas means to me opening presents in the morning and um, eating Christmas cookies. Um, celebrating Christmas with my family and um, celebrating that everyone's together and celebrating, celebrating when Jesus came. Um, spending time with your family and spreading cheer all around and singing and eating great food together and having the best time of your life. Um, the star over the um, stable where Jesus was born. The Bible giving God and love. Um, same. Uh, elf. Presents. Santa. Santa Claus. Um, a Christmas tree. Presents and and decorating, and decorating our house with Christmas stuff. And we we hang that the stockings. Giving and thank, being thankful, kind of like. Um, Thanksgiving, but with presents and a tree. Um, happiness and joy and Jesus' birth right and now. presents and video games. And, and, I don't know. That's it. And, get a seat and have usually. And it was the day that Jesus was born. And it's important because that was the day that our Savior was born. Anything else? No. Goodbye, goodbye. Wow, kids, you amaze me. I can see that you're not letting all of these details, all of the stuff keep you from missing Jesus. You have your hearts focused on the true meaning of Christmas. And of course, allowing space to enjoy special traditions and wishes of the season. Only a few more days now till Christmas, only a few more days till we celebrate and remember the great love, the greatest gift given to us all. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we've lit the fourth candle, the candle that represents love. May God's love overflow in your hearts and may the peace of Christ be with you. Share the peace of Christ with each other. Reach out to someone you're watching with, send a text or an email or chat on the Facebook Live page. May God's peace fill your hearts as we get closer to Christmas just around the corner. Church, this is a season of making room for Jesus, counting our blessings, expressing our gratitude. Thank you for your tithes and offerings and all the ways that you participate in our shared ministry together, whether it is by going online at pclg.org, giving there, or the Facebook Give button, or the old-fashioned way like me and mailing your check. We're grateful for all the ways that you contribute to our shared life and ministry together. Thank you.
with me, most holy God, we glorify you as we stand at the threshold of Christmas, anticipating the celebration of Jesus's birth. We're filled once again with awe at the gift of Emmanuel, God with us. We bring our tithes and offerings to you with humble and grateful hearts, aware that our gifts are small in comparison to what has been given through Christ. Lord, you don't need these gifts, but we yearn to bring them. We yearn to know the Christ child and to share his love with the world. Lord, use our time, talent, and treasures. Use all of us to share your good news with a hurting world that yearns for peace and love. And may all that we do bring glory to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson from the morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 to 22. Hear the word of the Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do? to inherit eternal life. Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I've kept all of these from my youth. Jesus looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing, go, sell what you own, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked. He went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning once again. It's so good to be with you today on this fourth Sunday in the season of Advent. We are creeping and crawling and continuing closer and closer to uh, the joy of Christmas Day uh, each day of the week. And, um, you know, last Sunday we were talking about joy. Pastor Erica was sharing about that. And this Sunday I want to talk about love. Another great theme of this Christmas season. We're talking about um, hope and peace, joy and love. And that's our theme for today. You know, in a way, um, love is what Christmas is all about. God's great love for the world and the way that that shows up in Jesus' birth and Jesus coming to us. I wanted to mention something that I loved from this past week. I heard from the Mates Fellowship Group, which is this longtime uh, fellowship of, our, of, our, of some members of our church. And at this point, these are older folks. And they, you know, in the pandemic, they, everyone's cut off and by themselves. But this group said, we're not going to let it stop us. We're going to get online. We're going to get onto Zoom. So they did a Zoom Christmas party. And I'll show you a picture of it here. Um, just great to see them fellowshipping together over the long term. What a blessing from God to have long-term relationships and friendships, um, especially ones that have deep meaning um, through, uh, through our shared faith. So God bless you guys. Good to see you. Um, so this Advent, we are kind of going through week by week these great themes of, the, of this time, hope and peace, joy and love. And this week, I want to talk to you about finding uh, and allowing more love into um, our lives. You know, talking about love is really pointing us to the very center of who Jesus or who God is. The New Testament writer, remember, um, in 1 John wrote this, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God and is born of God. He or she who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God is love. There's a Christian band um, that's called Switchfoot, and they have a song with a lyric about God. And this is what their song lyric says. It says, love is your native language, or rather, love is your tongue. Love, let me get it right. Love is your language. Love is your native tongue. Talking about God. This is a deep truth about who God is, who we know God to be. God is love. What is God like? Well, God speaks the native language of love. That's how God communicates and operates. And for all of us, as we get to know God, especially at Christmas, um, we see the way that God loves the world through the coming of Jesus Christ. And we then, who follow him, are meant to be people marked by love, right? So for most of you today, uh, who are still paying attention, 
Um, for the pastor to get up and say something like that, it's not a big surprise, right? That's not exactly news to hear this message, God loves you, uh, because we're here every week talking about the love of God. We're here every week exploring what that would mean for our lives. Um, in the Bible, we get all kinds of images and uh, metaphors and ideas about um, what God is like and how God loves us, and especially in Jesus in his life and ministry. You know, we, we hear about Jesus like the good shepherd, the one who goes looking for the lost sheep. We, we hear about Jesus who's um, who's like that woman who loses a coin in her house and she won't stop searching until she finds it again. Then she rejoices. We hear about Jesus kind of like that father in the prodigal son story who runs out with open arms to embrace the prodigal son. We hear about Jesus in so many different um, ways and the love of Jesus um, in the gospel. Just before our passage today in Mark's gospel was, the, was that famous story about the little children coming and Jesus saying, let the little children come to me. Jesus loves the little children as well. So then in Mark's gospel, we get to our passage that we just heard read, Mark chapter 10. And we hear about somebody who comes up to Jesus and this person is known to us as the rich young ruler. I don't know if you'd like to be called that or not, if that's a great uh, nickname, but it's, and this is actually a person who that's a composite sketch of him. He shows up in three different gospels and in each one we learn something new about him. He's rich, he's young, He's a ruler, he's an important person. And so he comes up to Jesus and he kind of is trying to show off maybe. He's he wanted, kind of sure of himself. He considers that he has had a very good career here in Silicon Valley. Do you know the rich young ruler? You know, he managed to buy himself a very nice home or maybe he's renting but only because he's saving up to get the house that he really wants. He lives in a community that has excellent schools and well manicured parks. The rich young ruler is a member in good standing, not only of the Rotary, the Elks, the Lions, and the Kiwanis Club, but also the Country Club, the Napa Wine Club, the, the top fitness clubs in the area. He also has built a home gym because, you know, they know about pandemics in the first century Palestine. You've got to be prepared. He was well-educated, well-traveled. His LinkedIn profile had been viewed many times by high-level recruiters. His social media posts showed that he was living life right. Do you know the rich young ruler? Now, first century Palestine was, was quite different from where we live today in Silicon Valley, of course, but we're making some connections from that story into our story. Um, one of the differences is that in the time that we live in these days, people want to be spiritual but not religious. Have you heard that? I'm spiritual but not religious. And in his time, in the first century, they wanted to be religious but maybe they weren't so spiritual. Part of a religious community, do the right things, but maybe not spiritual. Today we flipped that around. So he wants to prove him, himself and maybe uh, congratulate himself a little bit, and so he goes up to Jesus. And it's a great story because of what it, because of what it reveals about Jesus. About all, um, I don't know, something wrong in my notes. It reveals something about Jesus and, his, and the way that he operates. Um, it reveals something as well in this young man. And I'll tell you what both of them are. We know that Jesus is the one who's, who we want to hear about. But this young man, he goes up, and, and what it reveals in him, I think, is insecurity. You know, worry. Self-doubt. Deep desires. A, a need for kind of an external validation, maybe a sense of himself where he's not sure that his, his personal bona fides are really going to add up and come through in the end. He comes across as confident and maybe even arrogant, but I wonder if underneath it all, I wonder if beneath the surface and the exterior that everybody sees, I wonder if he wasn't so sure. Maybe he wasn't so sure that he was doing life right. He wasn't so sure that his parenting skills were up to snuff. Who knows how to do online virtual school anyway? He wasn't so sure maybe that he was doing his best work on the job, even as everyone has shifted how they work. He wasn't so sure that he's really being a good friend, a good spouse, a good neighbor. Maybe he wasn't so sure about the life path that he had chosen and invested so much in. Maybe he wasn't so sure that the future really would be so much better than the past. And maybe you're not sure that I'm, if I'm still talking just about the rich young ruler anymore. 
I love this story about this man's interaction with Jesus, especially for this one part, just this one line, this one insight. The person in this story um, presents one way out in public. He's so put together. But then I wonder if on the inside, underneath it all, if he's actually more complicated than that, more conflicted than that. There's more going on that he doesn't show other people. And this is what the Bible says. Jesus looked at him and loved him. Jesus looked at him, see, seeing him, he observed him, he knew him. I love this detail because it's like, even though he put on this face out here, I'm so confident and even pompous and arrogant, Jesus saw past that defense, saw past the outer exterior and went to the inside, to his heart. He knew him, he saw him, and it says, he loved him. This is a great um, insight for us today. It's that, um, it's that Jesus doesn't, doesn't love us generically. We're not loved generically. Oh yeah, a bunch of people over there. I love them all. God bless them. Um, the way that, that Jesus loves is uniquely. You are loved uniquely by God. In fact, so uniquely that not just like with all of your great attributes and the trophies on the shelf and the things that we are kind of proud of, but uniquely even in the parts of yourself that you'd rather not show. Even the parts of yourself that are um, broken or battered or bruised, those things are part of you as well. God uniquely loves you in all of who you are. That means that um, Jesus sees the young ruler, the rich young ruler, and loves him for who he is. Doesn't reject him, doesn't um, judge him, doesn't wait to see if he'll get his act together. Jesus meets us right where we are. Jesus met the rich young ruler right where he is, seeing everything about him, and still he loved him. You know there's an old saying, it says, behind every great fortune, there's a great crime. Have you ever heard that before? Behind every great fortune is a great crime. And uh, this rich young ruler, scholars have asked, well, how'd he get so rich, right? How did this person rise up uh, in this sort of agrarian peasant economy to somehow become rich? There's gotta be more to the story there about this man's life. And yet, he's somebody who is loved by Jesus. This is the starting point, really, for us to understand the love of God that comes to us at Christmas. It does not begin once we get our house decorated, once we get our Christmas cards out in the mail. God's love comes before we act. God's love for us is first. It is primary. Remember what the old scripture, said, scripture says, we love because God first loved us. And that's true here in our church. That's, that's, that's good news, not just for us, but it's also for our community and out into the world. Um, so I have a friend who I've told you about before. He's an artist back in Boston. His name is Alex Cook. Look him up on Facebook. Uh, he'd love to see you. And um, he has this one simple kind of life message that he wants to get out into the world. And it's, it's this, um, you are loved. And we've talked about this before, you are loved. And so this week I, got, um, I, got a, I bought a big um, banner from him on his website, and it says, you are loved. I'll show you a picture of it here. And I, I was just so struck by it, here, I, here we are. So we put it up on the corner outside the church, right on the corner, um, uh, uh, on the, the lawn of the church, so that everybody pulls up in their car, everybody walking their dog, people biking by, just going about their routine, going to the grocery store. They're gonna stop by our church, drive by our church, and see that message from us and from God. You are loved. Jesus meets our neighbors right where they are. Whoever sees that sign, his call to mind of God's love for them, right where they are. Jesus meets the rich young ruler right where he is. Jesus meets us that way too. But here's the thing, that's not the end of the story. Because Jesus meets us right where we are, but never leaves us the same. Amen? Jesus meets us right where we are, but never leaves us the way he found us. In fact, I wonder, if you're not changed by an encounter with Jesus, did you really meet Jesus? Was that the real Jesus, or was that kind of your own version of life? When we encounter Jesus Christ, we ourselves are challenged, compelled, changed. It's an ongoing life journey. That's what we call discipleship, and that's what we try to do together. But it's a process where God gets into our lives doesn't leave us 
where, we, where God found us. So Jesus challenges this rich young ruler in the story to give up his way of life, to change his way of life. And in his case, it's financial. Um, and he says, you know, give all, you, all of your money away to the poor, come and follow me. Now, before you get too worried over there, that was his particular thing. Jesus does not say that to everyone he meets. So um, the particulars will be different, but the call is the same to you and me. And then here it is. Come follow me. When Jesus meets someone and, and, and they start to change their life, he says, come and follow me. But the man of the story, it says he goes away sad because he, uh, he was not able to respond. He loved his fortune. He loved his finances. He loved um, his economic place in life. The truth is that it can be hard for us um, in our lives and with our, to get our loves in order to then follow Jesus, to be able to follow Jesus as part of following Jesus. Um, St. Augustine, that fourth century Bishop of Hippo that we've been talking about a little bit in this season, um, he writes about this, and I have a quote for you, so stick with me. It's kind of a long one, but you've got to turn on your thinking brains, uh, put on your thinking caps. Okay, here it is, St. Augustine, this is what he says. To love things, to love things, that is to say, in the right order, so that you do not love what is not to be loved, or fail to love what is to be loved, or have a greater love for what should be loved less, or an equal love for things that should be loved less or more, or lesser or greater love for things that should be loved equally. <sighs> That's a tongue twister. Um, he's talking about having our loves ordered correctly. I guess the opposite of, of that would be disordered love. Um, so don't miss, don't forget about the first point of the sermon while I talk about this second point today. The first point is God loves you. Okay, full stop. God loves you and meets you right where you are. But the second point continues and says that, uh, that there's a way in which we can struggle um, to get the various loves in our lives in the right order. We get God's love, we receive God's love, but then there's this discontent we have where our, li our lives don't feel quite right and that's the, there's a disordered love maybe that's there. So in the Bible story, this man, he loves his fortune and his finances, he, he, he uh, struggles to follow Jesus, and this is a classic form of what the Bible calls idolatry. Remember that big word? Um, taking something good, like money, and making it the ultimate good. Or taking something good and letting it have the top spot, the main spot, the place that should be reserved for God. Here's an example. Um, individual freedom is good, but it can lead to isolation and selfishness. Professional success is good, but it can lead to careerism. Technology is good, but it can permanently distract us, and it does. What? Religious faith is good, but it can turn into a kind of judgment for others. This is idolatry, taking something good and making it an ultimate good. So part of the work of Christmas is here. It is making room for God's love in our lives, of course, but that may mean some reordering of our loves. And if you think that you are hearing this and you, might, you don't need any reordering of loves, you've got it kind of nailed down, listen to what Tim Keller, Pastor Tim Keller says. This is a great line. He says, The functional cause of our discontent is that our loves are out of order. The functional cause of our discontent, and I wonder, have you had any discontent? Is it, are you feeling discontent? The functional cause of our discontent is that our loves are out of order. So we can ask that question, well, what, are, do we have discontent this year, this year at Christmas, where it's so different from the past? Or, or think back to Thanksgiving, where you, I know some of you had Thanksgiving meals by yourself, or just with your little household, or, or with a much smaller group than usual. I wonder if you felt discontent over these past nine months as we have been so disrupted and so locked down. I know you have. I know I have. And he's saying, when we have discontent, it tells us that maybe there's a disordered love. Disorder can be, or rather, um, discontent can be a diagnostic tool. It can be a blinking indicator light on the dashboard of your car. It can tell you something's not right. Something's not the way it's meant to be. There can be unholy discontent, where you're kind of upset and um, wrestling around with yourself all the time. 
but there can also be this kind of, of holy discontent. We've talked about this before, where it causes you holy discontent, causes you to ask some questions, to reorder your way of thinking or your priorities or the thing that you feel called to give your time to, your attention to, your worry to. When we're in a place of discontent, we say, what am I loving more than God? What am I loving in place of God? What do I need to shuffle the deck a little bit and make sure that my priorities of love, my, my hierarchy, if you will, uh, is right? I know that all of you listening today want to make love, want to, well, you do want to make love, you want to make room for love this Christmas, more room for your, um, in your lives. And I know your hearts as your pastor, um, and uh, I see you, and I love you. And Jesus meets us right where we are. Jesus meets us right where we are, full of yearning and hope, full of disappointments and grief, full of the full scope of uh, lived experiences from this past year. But Jesus, who meets us in this way, doesn't leave us in this way. Instead, we are called again, and even this Christmas, to hear the call of faith. Jesus said to the rich young ruler all those years ago, come and follow me. But he couldn't bring himself to do it. And now it's our turn, and the call is the same. Jesus, who sees you and loves you, also asks you to come and follow to reorder your life and your love, to let Christ have the number one spot in your life, in your heart. And so as we seek to respond in our own ways, with our own words and our own thoughts and our own, our own actions this week, may we do it, may you do it, with the full and deep knowledge of how much God loves you. May it be so this week. Amen. time in our service where we uh, pause to pray together just to lift up some of the joys and concerns of our lives and if you have a prayer on your heart today uh, here in the service you can put it in the chat box and share it with us that way a few that I want to lift up with you today first is we're really continuing to pray for our sister young law uh, after the death of her husband David and uh, he was buried this last week a number of PCLG folks were there along with um, a lot of her other friends outdoors um, but a hard time to lose someone where you can't really gather and do all the things you would normally do, including comforting her. So would you pray with pray for young Law, um, a, a grieving woman today? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We're also praying for uh, my wife Lisa's uncle, Roger, who uh, passed away uh, in Texas this last week. Um, and so just for, his, for that family, for Lisa's family these days, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Praying for our um, preschool director, um, Corey Mullins' family as well. They had a loss this last week. 
um, just another loss that they have to bear. And so we're praying and lifting them up as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. It's the time of year around Christmas when we have a lot of memories, right? Christmas is full of those. Um, and I wonder this December, this Advent, this Christmas, if there's somebody you're thinking of especially um, with grief, with loss, with love. Um, we had a blue Christmas service earlier in the season, but it continues as we get close to this big day. So I'm praying for you and thinking of you um, and hoping that you're finding God's comfort these days. Um, we're praying as well for Pat Garland's son, Glenn, and wife, Ruth, who've been sick and wondering about COVID stuff and just lifting them up, um, as well as uh, Pastor Erica's family in Texas, where they've had some uh, COVID case come up. And so we're just praying for um, healing for them, for everybody who's dealing with COVID in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, lifting up Mark Brown, um, who had an appendectomy surgery this last week, and um, Joni, his mom, says that he's doing well, he's recovering, he's still in discomfort, but he came through it in a good way, so we're hoping for healing with him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lifting up uh, those who, who are dealing with cancer in these days, uh, John Caker and Susan Caker have been on our list. Um, Susan got some results this week, and we continue to watch and wait for what, um, what will happen and what is possible uh, with that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, a lot of you, a number of you asked about my grandma Ruth uh, this last week who had been hospitalized. She's home again. She's stable. She's okay. She's doing well back in suburban Philadelphia. But thank you for reaching out and asking just for praying for my grandma Ruth. Uh, she's okay today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, and then also just yesterday, we had this great time um, with our college students by Zoom. It was a college fellowship brunch, which we normally host this time of year at my house. But we did it by Zoom, and it was great to just see a bunch of um, young people around the room, PCLG young people, folks you know from our youth group and from growing up in the church um, who are off into um, college years and that, and that age range. So that's just a joy in, in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, so those are some of my, my, my prayers today, and you have others to add in or just to, to continue in your prayer life. Let's, let's pray together. God of love, we give you thanks on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Lord, we give you thanks that you love the world so much as to send your Son, that you love each of us, that you look on us with love. God, I pray today that each of us would be encouraged um, by this good news that you love us, and also that we would be challenged in the ways that we show that love to others. Help us to have the eyes of love for those that we see, those that we're tired of, those that we're in disagreement with, those with whom we're, we're distant from. God, we pray that you would give us eyes of love to see all of those that you love so much. Lord, help us to love ourselves and to know ourselves and not to get tipped over sideways trying to please everybody else, but to be centered in you and rooted in you. Lord, I pray for everyone on, um, in this worship time today that they would um, feel your love and know it and also show it. God, we pray for our whole world today. We pray for our country and our leaders. We do pray for um, those who are in a time of particular need. We pray for against COVID. We pray for vaccines that work. We pray for a smooth rollout ahead. We thank you for those who have worked uh, to keep us safe and who continue to work um, to bring us through this time. God, I do lift up to you all the prayers we have, we have spoken today and those that are just held in the, in the insides of our hearts. So hear us today, Lord, as we continue to pray by uh, saying aloud the words that your son Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Well, we are here at the end of our service together today, but I know we're going to get back together in the week ahead because Christmas is coming. Christmas Eve is this Thursday. I look forward to seeing you at the drive through from 4 to 6 and then online in the evening at 8 p.m. this Thursday night. I look forward to all of that, and I hope that you will go out into your week taking with you the message of love from this morning. We know that the Christmas is all about expressing the love of God, the heart of God for us and for the whole world. So let's go out and live it together. Now receive this blessing as you go. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil, but support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of his spirit. May the blessings of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain within you, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. See you soon. Thank you.